Hello, my name is Jason and welcome to Best Baloka Reviews. So today I'm at IWA 2023, one of the world's, if not the world's largest trade show for outdoor sporting products. In what has to be said is a beautiful, historic, but at the same time pretty cold Nuremberg, Germany at the moment. So because the IWA is specifically a trade show and thus not open to the public, my goal here is to go inside, meet with some of the movers and shakers or the, the biggest brands and the best known brands in the world of optics and hopefully discover a few new ones. See what they have to offer, what's new, what's trending and share my findings with you guys. So before I freeze to death anymore, let's get inside and start right now. So my next point of call was to move away from the hustle and bustle of the show and go upstairs where I had an appointment to meet with Swarovski Optic in their own private lounge. So in this episode, we'll first listen to Catherine Pulecker, Swarovski Optic's PR manager, who will go over some of the main features on the NL Pure binoculars. Then after that, do stay tuned because I do get to spend quite a lot of time with these binoculars and I'll give you a few of my initial thoughts on them. Okay, then here, here we are at the Swarovski Optic Launch at the EVA 2023. And it's a pleasure to present you our NLP binoculars. So quality on the optics is that the field of view is really huge. It's the largest field of view we offer with binoculars. For example, for the 8 times 32 the field of view is 150 meters. So it's really outstanding. The um, second thing I want to mention is the ergonomical design. You see it here, it fits perfect in the hand. So you can also observe the surrounding with one hand. And uh, this design is really very special and we only have it with the NL Pure. So we have the small version. This one is a 8 time magnification, but also available in 10 time magnification and the objective diameter is 32 millimeters. It's available in orange and green. And the, the big brother or sister, <laughs> as you like, we can say it however you like it, um, is available in eight time, 10 time, and 12 time magnification. And the objective diameter is 42. It's the forehead rest. So if you can take the binocular and put it to the face and then with the three points to hands and the forehead rest it guarantees really that you can observe for quite a long time and you will not get tired. A uh, closer look, you he see here the focusing wheel. Uh, here with the NMP, it's inside of the bridge and if you move it, it's really smooth and so it's a good addition to the perfect economic design and you can reach it really good with one finger and so it makes it very easy to focus. What is also integrated in the bridge is the diopter adjuster. Uh, you see this little knot here and you can move it very easily. And when I turn the binocular then you see that the diopter adjuster is moving in the, into the directions you want to. Uh, when I use the 10 time magnification of the NL Pure and I have a small face, what is really helpful for me is that you can adjust the eye caps in different steps. Yeah. So for me, it works best when I do not put them completely out, out yeah. but get one step back okay. and then um, with the viewing, I can use the whole field of view. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Right, okay, so I know it's taken me way too long to get my hands on a, a set of NL Pure binoculars from Swarovski. Um, and I've just had a really interesting discussion with the guys um, who kindly uh, agreed to be interviewed or, or to um, for, for have me film them uh, talk about their product. Um, this is my, you know, I have um, had a chance to um, touch them before, but this is my first time to actually spend a reasonable amount of time um, with these binoculars. And there's a couple of things that I'd, I'd just like to sort of point out to you guys in that uh, when they first came out, I was, you know, I, I did make a video about it. And I, um, in that video, I was somewhat skeptical uh, in, in the thought that I, I thought they've just sort of come up with a, a few gimmicks to somehow um, make a new line of binoculars that would supersede the, their EL range. You know, things like the shape, and, and, and the fact that um, they have a headrest. 
What I have to say now that I've had time to, to use the binocular is, first off, the, the shape of the binocular is, is genuinely, uh, um, uh, it's, just, it, it's just something that you want to hold in your hands. And I know it sounds a bit weird to many people out there, but even the guys at Swarovski says it just feels so nice and you kind of like want to rub it on your skin. Um, it, it, it has a, a really silky, you know, really nice uh, feel to the actual um, rubber coating on, on the actual binocular itself. The shape with um, the, the barrel indent like this, um, again, it's just really ergonomic and, and really comfortable to hold. Um, is it a gimmick? I don't, you know, it's, it's, it's definitely an improvement than a straight barrel, put it that way. So if I had a choice between having a straight barreled EL binocular or this, I would definitely opt for this. It just feels nicer in the hands. So next up is the headrest. Okay, so this was one of the big things that, uh, yeah, yeah, until you've tried it, you, you can't um, comment too much either which way. So in my hands here, I have the um, NL uh, Pure 10 by 42, and I've been spending some time looking through them. Um, th what's quite nice about the headrest um, that, it, that screws into the actual uh, back bridge of the, of the binocular is that it also has its own adjuster. I don't know if you can see here, it, it actually moves in and out. So um, it's quite easy to, uh, I've been using the binocular, um, holding them as steady as I can. A 10 by 42, you're always going to get some sort of movement as, you, as you're looking through them. And then as I um, adjust the, I need to find it, I'm not used to it yet, the headrest and push it to a certain level against my forehead. I, um, it, there is a definite improvement to the stability of the image. Now, it doesn't suddenly make... Uh, the image completely still, um, as you would if you mounted it onto a tripod or something like that. But at the same time, you definitely can notice a slightly um, less image shake. Now, with a 10 by 42, there is an advantage to this, but I think it's where um, the, the headrest will definitely come into its own, is when on the 12 by 42 model. Okay, so apart from the, the shape, um, that I've already spoken about, and the headrest. Um, some of the things that really um, stand out for me on these binoculars, um, just on my initial look at them, and, and things that I do like, um, I think um, they spoke about it a little bit earlier, but it's something that I sort of brought to their attention that I really appreciate. In the past, um, on my, if you check out my older reviews of like the, the EL and, and the, um, other, some of the other binoculars, um, one of the negative points I had about their binoculars was their, their focus wheel, whilst extremely smooth, and, and worked very well. You know, it was um, mostly um, made out of plastic and, and looked plasticky, which to my mind just didn't quite match the, the level of the binocular and the optics contained within. And it was something that I always, um, I have always mentioned in my reviews. Well, now, I mean, I, I can't really, you can't really tell what the, what the focus wheel um, it's, it's, I don't think it's completely metallic, but I do really like the fact that it's completely encased within the actual bridge itself. So um, I think it, it, it looks really nice. Um, it's extremely smooth. It's, it's one thing that you, you will notice. But the fact that it's, it's all integrated within this um, magnesium uh, bridge, I assume a magnesium one anyway, um, is, is really, really nice. Um, once again, with the, with the shape of it, um, I think even if you've got really small hands, you should be able to very much easily um, reach the focus wheel and turn it just with one finger. Okay, so then an, another feature that we um, sort of briefly went on over with, with them together was the, the actual um, eye, eye cups and eye, eyepiece housings. So straight away you can see that it's um, the eye cup for a start. When you, when, you, when you pull it out fully like that, you can see just how much eye relief there is. Massive. I, I don't have the figures to hand, um, and I'll put it up some way, but in my review it'll go through all these details. But you can, you can instantly tell, even though this is a 10 by 42 has tons of eye relief. Now... On top of that, it's, it's fine to have a lot of eye relief, but um, what, where a lot of places or uh, well, binoculars go wrong is, is because it extends so far, uh, when it's fully extended, it, it all moves, the actual eye cup moves about quite a lot. Yes, there is some movement, which is understandable. It's, I think it's impossible to, well, I have not yet come across one that's completely um, immovable, but the amount it moves is, is, is very, very minimal. And because it, all the parts are made out of metal, the thing that I instantly notice is just how... The, the mechanism is just so nice. It clicks into each, and it's got a lot. I mean, it, it's quite hard to actually tell how many click stops it has, because when you get towards the top, there is a lot. And I think this is something that's quite unique, because most binoculars will have one intermediate stop, perhaps two. Whereas these binoculars, you can see, so that's fully twisted down, and you can go up and up, two, three, four, 
five, six, six, perhaps um, five or six intermediate stops. And they're all, you know, obviously closely um, together. So the chances are, and as we spoke about earlier, some people, not everyone will, will be able to. So without glasses, you, most people will have them fully extended like this, and you should get the full field of view. But depending on the shape of your face and how deeply inset your eyes are, different people will have slightly different needs. And that's why it's, for me, it's always been important to be able to twist on the eye cup and have it stay um, in that position, even if you press it quite firmly against your face, which is exactly what these do. And on the other side, you know, people who wear glasses, usually the option is to fully twist them down and that's it. And then I have often found, having only recently now had to start using glasses, that even though um, the fully twisted arm is, sometimes I'm having to just pull my face away a little from the binocular. Oh, it's gone out of focus there. There we go, back. I um, just pull my face away a little bit from the binocular to get um, the full field of view without any um, black rings falling on the edges. With these binoculars, um, I'm just going to try uh, live on camera <laughs> um, for me. So I've got them fully taped. Yeah, I mean, honestly, with glasses on, I can see abs there's absolutely nothing on the end. So that's fully twisted. Let me just go one step up. I can still, I can still see the full field. I think there's a slight bit of tunneling on the edges now. If I go one step up, yeah. So for me, it would, would be probably fully twisted down or one level up. Um, but that's the point here is that you've got the choice. You can, you can make these, um, fine adjustments to get the binocular to work exactly right for your needs. Okay, so and another thing is um, I have actually now finally arranged to have um, some of their binoculars to come into uh, the BBR um, office and for me to actually have a trial, uh, a pair of uh, uh, trial binoculars for me to test out um, in the next coming month or so. So the, the funny thing is, is they as far as people are asking me, well, which one do you want? And I kind of like, yeah, I kind of want all of them, really, to be honest, because they um, and it was quite a dilemma to choose for me to decide because, um, for instance, the the twelve by forty two is is unique to Swarovski. I, you know, there's not many um, binoculars out there that have the twelve by forty two configuration. But for someone like Swarovski to move to a twelve by forty two is is uh, kind of new in that, and I think it follows a global trend to more and more power. And again, I was somewhat skeptical in that um, by increasing the power to 12 times, they haven't increased the size of the objective lens, you know, to something like um, a, a 40 or a, a, a 45 or a 50 millimeter, um, just to maintain the exapupil and a, a bright image. Um, obviously, an advantage of not increasing the size of the objective lenses is the fact that um, the size of the binocular doesn't increase, uh, or the weight. But, um, so, part of me wanted to test the 12 by 42 because I thought, oh, well, you know, it's a unique product, and I think that's where the headrest is definitely going to, you know, come into its own and really make a difference. But at the same time, I think um, it's quite a niche product, so it's going to be, you know, for people who want that extra distance, but at the same time are mostly going to be using it in good light conditions because they, you can't get around it even with the superb optics that these have. You can't get around, um, you know, the fact that they are actually going to have quite a small um, exit pupil, and that means no matter how good the optics are, how good the coatings are, the um, low light performance is is never going to be on a um, a level with the the 10 by 42 and especially the 8 by 42. 8 by 42, the uh, part of me wanted to use that one because personally, that's probably the one I would opt for if I was choosing a binocular for myself. In that it's just gonna, it's got a massive, I mean, that's one of the things, massively wide field of view, um, which is something that's, for me, is, is really important, viewing birds and things at, at close range um, and uh, moving about really fast. And also, I spend quite a lot of time in forests and things like this where the light conditions aren't, aren't great. So, having that really large exit pupil combined with really good um, optics and coatings is something that I, I really like. Then um, the 10 by 42, somewhere in the middle ground, is, is probably the one I'm going to test, I, I think. We will see. In that, um, it's the middle ground, as I said. So you you're um, got a little bit more power than the 8 by 42, but at the same time, you're slightly narrower field of view and a slightly less um, a binocular, this, uh, less uh, adept in low light conditions. Um, but I do feel that it will be nice for me to then go on and talk about how the headrest um, because I think with the 8x42, it's still going to, I think, make a, some, somewhat of a difference. But it's the 10 and 12x42 where um, the headrest, um, to me, 
again, I'll say I first thought it was a complete gimmick, but um, I've just been trying it out, and um, there is um, a, an element um, to how it makes the image a little bit more stable. Now, obviously, when I test it properly, um, when I ha have more time um, back at home uh, with these binoculars, um, I'm going to go into this in more detail. And then there's the 32 millimeter <laughs> versions. Again, I'd be, temp I'd be so tempted to take an 8x32 because, again, this is probably the binocular that I would use um, more often, somewhat, apart from not being as good in low light conditions. It's just super easy to carry around. Um, you know, again, combined with that really nice uh, shape that they've got, um, to hold it in your hands. You know, for me, I don't use a, a neck strap that often. Um, you know, to have these, just carrying them around like this is, um, you know, no trouble at all. Right, okay, so that's it for episode two of my visit to the IWA show in Nuremberg, Germany. I do hope that you found at least some of that video um, informative and perhaps a little bit entertaining. If so, please do remember to give us a thumbs up, as I really do appreciate it. Then, uh, also, come, to come out of that meeting with Swarovski, um, what I'd like to say is that now it looks like we have finally arranged for a pair of their NLP binoculars to come into my office and for me to give them a full and thorough testing. And thus, do look out for, in the future, a complete and in-depth review on them. Um, and speaking of which, just to make sure that you do actually get to see that video and the full review on the BBR website, subscribe to the channel because in that way you will be informed as of when that content comes out. Then, um, next up in this series, um, I will be meeting with uh, German Precision Optics. So, as I said, subscribe to the channel and you will be informed as and when that video comes out, hopefully within the next day or two. I do hope to get it up uh, before the weekend or probably on Saturday morning, something like that. Other than that, I just want to say uh, thanks very much for watching this far. And as always, if you have any thoughts, comments, ideas, opinions or whatever, Please don't, don't be shy to use the, the comment section down below and I will do my very best to get back to you. Um, other than that, I just want to, I'm going to leave it here for now and just say thanks very much for watching and I'll see you again next time. Cheers for now.